So that's, that's Our project was focused on increasing the efficacy of residency training. Uh, we focused primarily using simulation labs where we bring in the internal medicine residents, emergency medicine residents, and we put them through a simulated code scenario. We found that using situation, uh, situations in the sim lab, we can significantly improve their performance in the real world. They've oftentimes only run a handful of codes, and we'll take them to the sim lab, run them through 10, 15, 20 mock codes, and then we follow them in the hospital, and their performance was significantly improved from pre-training to post-training. So hopefully this will translate to uh, improved patient outcome. I've learned that post-medical school you still have to learn a lot. And it's a lot different in the real life than it is in medical school. In between our first and second year we went to Guatemala City to uh, HIV AIDS clinic there. And we were looking specifically at why people presented uh, to the clinic or came to the clinic very late in the course of their disease. Some of the salient themes that we found included fear, misconception, and denial. And some Guatemala-specific themes that we found had to do with the machista culture. For example, uh, a lot of women came into the clinic finding out that they were HIV positive because their husbands were sleeping around, and uh, the use of condoms was often the male's choice. Uh, this is the wall of uh, barriers to HIV diagnosis, and this is the person before he gets tested, and he must traverse all of these barriers and over the wall before he gets tested for HIV. We looked at a condition called SCIFI, which is slipped capital femoral epiphysis. It's the most common hip disorder in adolescence. The easiest way to explain it is to imagine an ice cream cone and your hip, the ball in, sits in your socket as if it's the ice cream sitting on top of the cone and what happens is in this condition those two start to slip and fall apart. So it's as if the ice cream's falling off the cone. So you'll put a pin in to keep that in place. Usually patients do pretty well but some of them will go on to need a secondary surgery. So what we wanted to do was look and see if there's anything that defines those patients. We looked at BMI, we looked at how bad their condition was, different parameters that define it, um, and the only thing was the gender. So females were actually in almost uh, underwent secondary procedures at nearly five times the rate per unit time that males did. So that's something that we could look at in the future. My project is on veterans who have experienced blast-related mild traumatic brain injury or concussion. Blast-related concussions have become very common in the recent wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. About 20% of veterans experience it. Whenever you see a triangle, you're going to press the left button. Our study is unique in that we recruited siblings and cousins as the healthy control group to whom we compare the veterans. We found that the veterans have performed significantly worse than their siblings on uh, measures of health-related quality of life, depression, anxiety, PTSD, attention, memory, and cognitive flexibility. We're contributing to the literature on the blast-related mild traumatic brain injury, and as this literature grows, I think this will really benefit the veterans in the future.